Ten years ago, when Amy Fail and her husband decided to start a family, it wasn't very long before they welcomed their son into the world. But it would be more than seven years before he would become a big brother. I got pregnant quickly with my son and her it took years. But when they looked at the ultrasound in the beginning, they weren't even sure what her survival would be because of where she implanted. Instead of implanting in the higher end of the uterus, she was in middle to lower, so they weren't sure whether she was gonna even survive. Somewhere between one and three percent of patients are going to have something abnormal about their placenta. Usually that the placenta is just a little bit low in the uterus. Dr. Stephen Ralston is the co-director of the New England Center for Placental Disorders at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. When a woman has a placenta that is implanted abnormally over the cervix, the primary problem that she may face during the pregnancy is bleeding or hemorrhage. Sometimes when the placenta is implanted abnormally, the baby itself will not receive as much nutrition, oxygen as it normally would from a normally implanted placenta too, so we also worry about the growth of the baby. And then a very smaller percentage of women will have something where the placenta is invading into the wall of the uterus, something called a placenta accreta. That was the situation for Cassandra Marshall, the mother of five young boys who were all born by cesarean section. What she didn't know was that each of those deliveries increased her risk for accreta. Hi. <laughs> when you looked at the ultrasound, you could see where my old incision was on the inside, and the placenta had actually pushed up against it. And she said, well, that is a condition known as accreta, so we have to transfer you to Boston because we can't treat that here. The thing that you do automatically is go online and search for this condition, and it was frightening what I read online. Having these disorders is a scary diagnosis, and I think one of our first jobs is to give them reassurance that they are getting their care in the right place with the right team, with an experienced team, who takes care of a lot of these women. Um, and we have very good outcomes. We involve maternal fetal medicine, urology, OB anesthesiology, blood bank, social workers, intensive care units often. And we meet multiple times during the pregnancy to plan for the delivery. Most of these patients have met the primary nurse two days before when they came in for their pre-op testing. So that's the person who's going to be talking with the patient and spending the most time with the patient, doing that one-on-one. -on -one counseling and reassuring and helping the partner because oftentimes the, um, they need just as much help as the patient to calm them because they're just as nervous as the patient about what's going to happen. When there's complications in a pregnancy like a placenta disorder, a placenta accreta certainly, then you want to be delivered in a place that A has the expertise to deliver that care and has the volume of patients that gives the practitioners there a lot of experience dealing with those complicated patients. With Accreta, we had to have an entire team. We had neonatology, we had anesthesiology, we had urology. My anesthesiologist, um, when my daughter was born, I started crying and he took my glasses off, wiped my eyes for me. It was just so caring and amazing. There's no other center like this in New England right now. And we are getting referrals from all over New England. And we really feel like we're on the forefront of that. I mean, their expertise in this is just phenomenal. It can't be matched. I mean, and like I said, I'm grateful for them. As scary as this condition is, when you have a doctor that you can trust and put your faith into wholeheartedly, it makes it so much easier.